Hey you guys, welcome to Joke Day. And if you notice, it's kind of like a joke on me because I don't know if you can see it in your cameras very well, but the sun keeps shining in my eyes today. If I move just right, the sun's in my eyes. Crazy. Hey, well, welcome to another day of our uh, school at home. So this is a video to walk you through the checklist for Tuesday, April 28th, and it's joke day. Everybody loves a good joke, right? So I've got three joke books here. Let's take a look at a few funny jokes before we dive into the lesson. This joke book is called The Funniest Joke Book Ever. Let's see if we can find a couple funny jokes. What do two oceans do when they meet each other? Nothing. They just wave. Get it? Because there's waves in the ocean. <laughs> Pretty good one. Let's find another. What do you get if you cross a cow and a duck? Milk and quackers. <laughs> get it? Instead of uh, crackers, it's a duck quack, so it's quackers. Okay, let's find one more funny one. Okay, this is what the dad said to Billy. Why did you put a frog in your little sister's bed? And Billy says, because I couldn't find a mouse. <laughs> All right, so that's this joke book. Let's take a look at my other joke books here. This is a laugh out loud joke books for kids. They're Christmas jokes. Let's see, let's see if we can find a couple funny Christmas jokes in here. Knock, knock. Who's there? Don. Don who? Don, you want to come outside and play in the snow? All right, let's see what else we can find. Um, So Jack Frost is a Christmas character that is supposed to be the one that brings the frost and makes it really cold in some stories. So that's what is the, in this joke. Um, what do you get when Jack Frost turns on the radio? Really cool music. Get it? Because he makes things cold, so it's cool. Um, all right, now let's look at Mickey Mouse's joke book. You can tell this one's been well used and it's falling apart, but I love it. It's funny. It's got some funny stuff in it. Um, <laughs> I'll show you this one. Mickey, is it true that bears will not hurt you if you carry a tennis bat? That depends on how fast you carry it. I think that one's really funny because yeah, this is a picture makes it extra funny. You sure grow a lot of peaches here, Mickey said to the farmer. We sure do, the farmer answered. What do you do with all of them, asked Mickey. We eat what we can, said the farmer. And what we can't, we can. See how they're putting the fruit into cans? So what they can't eat, they can. Because they put it into cans. One more and then we'll get on to our lesson. Um, So Mickey is talking to this kid, and he says, Why are you crying, Henry? Because my new shoes hurt my feet. That's because you have them on the wrong feet, Mickey tells him. And he says, Well, they're the only feet I have. Get it? Mickey tells him he has them on the wrong feet because he's switched sides. He has the right foot on the left and the left foot on the right. But the kid doesn't understand that. He just says, 
These are the only feet I have. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully you got a kick out a few out of a few of those jokes. Um, it can be fun to make sure we are getting a good laugh in. So as you work on your schoolwork today, I hope you are able to laugh. Now, um, we had learned. Let's jump into our checklist now on math. Let's get into our math lesson. We had learned about how to read a bar graph. But it's also important to know how to create a bar graph. Up my pen just a second. Ah, got it. So, uh, so um, you need to know how to create a bar graph, and that's what we are practicing today. If you look at this up here, it says Abel read two books, Brad read four books, Carl read one book. And Lynn read three books. Complete the bar graph to show this data. Now on the bar graph, it has two of the bars done and we have to complete the rest. So let's look at Cora. Come over here to Cora. Cora read one book. So I'm only going to fill in one bar. I'm gonna fill in the bar up to the one line, which on this graph is just one bar. Many second grade graphs is just one bar. Lynn read three books. Okay, so Lynn is going to be three bars. Now, when you're doing a bar graph, the bars are all connected in a nice bar. So you need to take your pencil back if you were doing this for a problem and make a bar out of this real nice. Color it in. And my pen is dying, but color it in nice so we can tell it's a nice bar. Um, now, remember, sometimes when you're doing bar graphs, not right now in second grade, but I, do, I, will, I don't want you to get any wrong ideas in your head. Sometimes one bar or one line on the graph actually means five or something like that. So every bar would be worth five. So you got to look over here at the actual numbers and see how much it is. On this graph, the first line and the first box is just one. Every box is worth one. So for, for second grade and for our graphs, that's easy, but you need to know it's not always that way so that you don't get mixed up when you see something that is like that. Okay, so on the example problem down here, Ella is making a bar graph to show the kinds of pets that her classmates have. Five classmates have a dog, seven classmates have a cat, two classmates have a bird, and three classmates have a fish. The question says, write labels and draw bars to complete this graph. Well, it already has our labels for us, number of classmates and pets, but you can trace on top of that. I'm just writing on top of the letters it already has there. Okay, after you label what each side means, then we need to fill in the numbers. So five classmates have a dog. That means we need to find dog on the chart and go up to five. Oh, it already did it for us. Let's go to the next one. Seven classmates have a cat. So now we have to find cat and go up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Double check. Yep, there's seven right there. You're going to make a nice box. My pen always dies when I'm trying to use it for math because of how I have to hold it for this camera. Okay, so you're going to go up to seven and make a nice box and then fill it in. Let's look at the next one. Two classmates have a bird. One, two, three classmates have a fish. One, two, three. There we go. Now, after you fill this out, um, you, there's going to be, on most of them, there's going to be a question to answer. So the question says, 
the question is to take this graph information and think about it, how it, um, how it could apply to real life. So the question says, how would the graph change if one more child gets a bird? Well, if one more child gets a bird, then there's lots of answers you could give. The first thing that jumps out to me is if one more child gets a bird, these two would be tied. So that's what I would write on the line. Birds, bird and fish would be tied. There are other answers you could give as well. But the point is to practice making a graph be, um, and then understanding what it tells you. It's called creating and interpreting charts and data. So we want to create charts and graphs, and we want to be able to interpret them or answer questions about them. Think about what they're really showing us. And so that's what we're practicing today. Just a couple of questions. It shouldn't be too bad, hopefully. Now, here's what your worksheet looks like. Since there's a question about pizza, I put up here a pizza joke. So read through the pizza joke and see if you think it's funny. Um, and you're going to take the pizza information and fill in this chart right here. Then question number five goes along with the, um, with the pizza chart. And let's see, question number six goes along with the pizza chart as well. So um, fill out the pizza chart, fill out the questions that go with it, and you're done. Okay, pause the video now and go complete the graph. Okay, you should be back from doing math now, and it's time to do our spelling. So remember on spelling, we do uh, this, this week's spelling is two syllable words that have those long vowel sounds. We have to remember the long vowel sound is created with a magic E sometimes. There's different ways to do it, but the two most famous, most common are the magic E, like this says hike, not kick, if you're trying to sound it out, because the E jumps backwards over one letter and makes the I say I. Um, another common way to make a long vowel sound, and remember, long vowel sounds are A, E, I, O, U, instead of the short sound, A, A, E, A, A. The long sounds are A, E, I, O, U. So, another famous and common way to make the long vowel sounds are vowel teams. A, I says A, and so does A, Y. Um, I, E says I. E A says E, E E says E, so these vowel teams. Well, this week is to practice words that have a magic E and they, or words that have vowel teams. Can you then add another syllable with it? So remember, we have placement is the first one on the test. What else is on here? Uncrate, groaning. And the trick to it is to spell the first syllable first and then the next. And you have to memorize each syllable. Let's take groaning. First you do grrr. Now the O, you might not remember whether it's a magic E or a vowel team. So you'll have to memorize it. It's the vowel team, O-A. Groan. Groan. And of course, groan means to go, Ugh. Well, the word is not groan, though. It's groaning. So we spelled the first syllable or groan by sounding out each part. Now we add the ending ing, which as you know is ing. Grown ing. So I want you to, as you're tracing these words, read them and think about those two syllables. Spell one syllable, then the next. This is practice putting those two chunks of words together. The first syllable and the second syllable, putting them together. Um, okay, so pause the video and trace the spelling words. And while you're tracing them, uh, read them and think about how the two pieces combine together to make the word. All right, pause the video now and trace those spelling words. All right, you should be back from tracing your spelling words. The next thing is to do some writing. I have an empty writing page for you that looks like this. And since it's joke day, write a story about a clown. What is the clown in your story going to do? I don't know. You tell me. Um, write a, some 
I don't know, some adventure that a clown has or some funny thing that a clown does. Write a story about a clown. <coughs> because it's joke day. And remember, at this point in the year, you should be using capitals to start the sentences. Nice sentences, period at the end, and nice handwriting. All right? Go ahead and, and um, my, on Wednesday is when you'll need to take another look at your story and fix anything that needs fixed. So do your very best now. Then you won't have so much to fix when you do the schoolwork for tomorrow where I say to fix your story. So go do your best and write a story about a clown. After you're done with your clown story, then take a recess break and pause the video to do writing and recess and then come back for more. Woo! Okay, you should be back from writing your, your clown story and from do, taking a recess break. The next thing on our list is to read sight work. The next thing on our list is reading. So let me tell you about reading. Um, this is a sight word list, and there's a funny joke you can read right here, so make sure you take time to read the joke. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm looking for my spelling list. I think I had a funny joke on the spelling list, too. So make sure... Oh yeah, there's my, have a funny snowman joke on the spelling list. So make sure you read that. If you didn't read it, go back and read it because it's funny. Now for reading, you're, there's three things as always. First thing, sight words. Bed, enough, family, list, oh, people, shop, sleepy, oh, sleep, today, tomorrow. Read the funny joke. Read through the sight words, read the funny joke. Second thing is, um, just a practice page. If you look in the corner at what we're practicing, it says cumulative review. That means there's not a certain skill that we're practicing actually on this page. It's just all these things that we practiced this year. Can you put them together and read? And I know you can. So uh, spend some time, read this story just as a practice of all kinds of sounding out or phonics skills that we've done throughout the year. There's also a funny penguin joke at the bottom. So make sure you read the penguin joke because I think it's a pretty good one. Miss Lemmert, you guys know her. She'd help us during math time. Miss Lemmert uh, got a kick out of my penguin joke too. So make sure you take a look at that and read it. Okay. After you've done those two reading things, sight words and the staying warm story, then you, I want you to read for 30 minutes, okay? So go do those three things. Pause the video and do those three things. Then you can come back. Okay, you should be back from reading now, and it's PE time. Remember, the whole point of the our PE time in our class is to get exercise. So go get some exercise right now, um, whatever your parents want you to do. But if it's warm outside, maybe they'll let you go outside and get some fresh air, go for a walk, do some jumping jacks, push-ups, whatever they want you to do. Get a little bit of exercise, then come back. So pause the video for PE and exercise and come back. Okay. The next thing on our list is to the community building. So go on to Padlet, see what things your friends wrote. I want you, if you can think of a funny joke or if you have a book or a website that has jokes, then go on to Padlet and type out a funny joke for us because we would love to read your funny jokes and get a good laugh. So if you want to, go on to Padlet and give us a funny joke to read. Um, after you're done with that, if you want to, you, for uh, lift time, you can go to Epic, and on there, there's some funny joke books. If you just go to search and type in joke, it'll bring up uh, joke books that you can look through and read some funny jokes. So that's your lift time. You're learning a fun time for today to get on Epic and read some funny jokes, to practice reading and, and have some fun with it by reading jokes. Um, as always, the last two things are to have fun and to be kind. Remember, you are great kids. Keep working hard and know that I'm proud of you. Know that I miss you and I'm sad that we're in this empty classroom and wish that you could be here with me. But um, yeah, just keep on working hard and I'm, I'm proud of you. Thank you, guys.